What's up, Wolverines? I'm Matthew Belvides. And I'm Lucas Vigardis, and welcome to another edition of WBLN. Florida is preparing for a subtropical storm that could become a hurricane later this week. Governor Ron DeSantis declaring a state of emergency for multiple counties. This latest system, coming less than two months after Hurricane Ian, pummeled western and central Florida. The cleanup's still ongoing from that storm. Luis Martinez looks at the projected storm's path and how Florida is bracing for its wrath. Florida bracing for what could be a rare November hurricane. The last one was almost 40 years ago. And not just for Florida, this is for all of the U.S. Subtropical storm Nicole churning towards the Sunshine State, heading straight for the East Coast. It could strengthen to a hurricane by late Wednesday. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declaring a state of emergency for at least 34 counties, releasing a statement warning Floridians to prepare for an increased risk of coastal flooding, heavy winds, rain, rip currents, and beach erosion. The National Hurricane Center already issuing a storm surge watch from Florida's east coast up to Georgia. We could see three to five storm foot surge all the way from southeast areas of Georgia down toward West Palm. This latest system coming less than two months after Hurricane Ian slammed Florida's west coast. Making landfall as a Category 4 hurricane. The powerful storm killing at least 130 people in the state and leaving parts of western and central Florida unrecognizable. Homes flattened, infrastructure crumbled, businesses destroyed. The cleanup could take years, and now Florida is bracing once again for what could be another hurricane. Nicole is expected to bring strong winds and rain with the storm expected to make landfall on Wednesday night. Voter turnout could be impacted Tuesday as Floridians prepare for the storm. The storm is currently 520 miles east of the state. We spoke to Mr. Roca about the safety parameters in wake of the looming subtropical storm. Our hurricane policy uh, has always been the same. We uh, look at all the information available, uh, including from uh, the National Weather Center, uh, Dade County Public Schools, the Archives of Miami. And based on that information, we uh, will close. Uh, generally, we close when Dade County closes. Uh, so that is usually the big lit litmus test. Um, now for this storm, it, it seems like it has moved up north a little bit. We're outside the cone right now, but because it's a big weather event, uh, we do have to keep in mind, are we gonna have gusts of over 40 miles per hour? Uh, is there gonna be flooding in some areas and make it, make it difficult for people to get out to school? So uh, all of that has to take, be taken into account to make a final decision. This weekend, the Belen Model UN Advanced Team competed at Central Texas University in Austin. Led by seniors Aiden Suarez and Julian Alvarez, the delegates did us proud, being awarded Best Small Delegation. David Guillaume won for bo uh, Best Post-War Japan, Best Delegate. Tetsu Ketayama, Japan Socialist Party Secretary General. Otto Espino, Ad Hoc, Outstanding Delegate. Rhode Island, Henry Lissamore, Global Simulation. Germany, Honorable Mention, Peter Clem, State Secretary in the Federal Ministry of Finance. Julian Alvarez, Interpol, Honorable Mention, Peter Sciarto. Yesterday, the Camillus House Immersion Experience was renewed after having stopped due to the pandemic. Members of the 8th grade toured Camillus House and served lunch for their clients. Camillus House serves 1,000 meals daily to people in need in our community. The day has finally arrived, with millions of ballots already cast. Billions of dollars spent on campaign ads and control of Congress at stake. We go to Jay Camejo, who takes a look at what we might expect today. In the final hours of the 2022 midterm campaign, Democrats, including President Joe Biden, are asking voters to see this less as a referendum on his presidency, but more as a defense against a potentially destructive Republican majority. Bones that our democracy is at risk, and we know that this is your moment to defend it. Republicans, optimistic voters will blame Democrats for decades high inflation, pinching Americans every time they go to the grocery store, and other issues hitting households more acutely. As the party aims to flip both chambers of Congress, why is it competitive? Cost of living, crime, the inflation, the lost learning through COVID. Republicans are also eyeing former President Donald Trump's sway in tight contests like the U.S. Senate race in Ohio, where Trump stumped Monday night as a former president flirts with announcing a 2024 bid. Tomorrow you must vote Republican in a giant red wave that we've all been hearing about. But Democrats also see the talk of another Trump run as a motivator for their voters, especially women. 
Our strength is based on who we lift up. And so we will fight, and when we fight, we win. Vice President Kalamala Harris crisscrossing the country to campaign with women candidates in the home stretch, sending a closing message against Republicans' restrictive abortion and voting rights proposals, two issues Democrats hope will make it. What's up, Wolverines? I'm Matthew Barturin, and here are your sports for today. How about six in a row? Our Wolverine cross-country team won their sixth consecutive state title, with Josh Ruiz once again leading the pack. The school held an assembly to celebrate our Wolverines. Thank you, Father Willie, and Soroka, Mark, and the rest of the administration, and the rest of the school and its students for supporting us to lead these young men for another season. This state title is something we share with you all. When these young men first take their first step at the, at the first cross-country practice here at Belen, they don't show up as winners. They show up as choosers. They choose to do something hard, something that will undoubtedly callous their minds to prepare them for all the hard stuff that will come later in life. This particular group standing before you had to choose this summer to do something no Belen team had done before. They recognize that the rest of the teams in the state and even the southeastern United States were inching closer to them. Winning doesn't get easier just because you did it, did it the prior year. In fact, it gets much harder to keep winning. So they chose to stay a month in Arizona at altitude to train together this summer. From then on, they kept choosing to do things that were hard, setting their sights on success. It was and still is hard doing these things every day that inch them further and further away from the competitors. Countless two-a-day practices, hundreds of training miles in the Everglades, eating right, recovering right, and so on. But you know what was the one choice they made that all the hard stuff made that made all the hard stuff achievable and arguably easier? They chose to do it for one another. On Saturday, when they were hurting, their minds didn't go to mope about their own pain and struggle, but instead it went to thinking about how hard the rest of their teammates wearing gold near them were pushing. And therein lies a secret to their continued motivation. Why winning for these guys never gets old? They run to honor their school and each other. Their season story isn't over yet. They have a few more races left at the national stage as a 12th ranked team in the country. I congratulate each and every one of them, their coaches, for their past success and their continued success. I thank all the alumni and I thank the administration. And to the seniors on the team, I thank you for staying committed all the way through. You are the 2022 state champions and the best team in all of Florida. Thank you. Your Wolverine football team took a 16-0 win over rival LaSalle with the defense having another monster game with three interceptions and a fumble recovery. The Wolverines take on Dr. Crop in the first round of the playoffs this Friday at 6 p.m. at Monsignor Pace. Good luck, Wolverines. The soccer team took a 1-0 win over Ferguson in our first game of the year. Congrats, Wolverines. We talked with goalie Carlos Bustamante about the team's performance. Um, we won the game, which is the most important part. Still a lot of work to do. We have a young team, um, team sport. If one of us plays bad, we all play bad, so we just got to work together, practice harder, and we have uh, a, long, a long season ahead of us. The Canes basketball team started their season hot, taking a 67-54 win over the Lafayette Leopards, with Isaiah Wong and Nigel Pack leading the way with 16 points. That's all for sports. Now back to the guys at the desk. Thanks, Matt. Remember to follow us on all of our social medias. And from all of us here at WBLN, stay safe and stay golden, Wolverines.